So I reworked our diagram from the last video. You can see I've kind of separated the systems a little bit. I have my game up here. I also added the ship. I forgot, of all things, in the last video to talk about the ship. The update loop was part of my game and the lurper here. So what we have on top here is all the game specific stuff. In our game that we're building, we have a ship, we have a lurper. They're very specific to our game. Hence, they are in blue, and hence they are ab above this line here. Now, down below, this is like the foundation of our house, if you would. These systems here are part of our engine. In fact, I'll put a big fat E here for engine. These parts make up the engine. Now, what parts of your code should go in your game versus go in your engine? That can definitely be a religious debate you can have forever and ever. My general rule of thumb is if I'm going to use it in more than one game and its general purpose, then it should be in the engine. But if it's specific to the game, it can go in the game. I've also heard of uh, studios doing something like where we have this engine code that's used in every single game. We have game code that's very specific to the game. And then we have this kind of other code that sometimes reusable for other games like if a company makes the same game over and over and over again but different versions and that sort of thing so those could go in their own separate projects and and yet idea I want to build our game uh, but break it up into these systems instead of this one monolithic file we have here this my GL window everything's in here and that is definitely not ideal if we're going to go further with this for something quick and dirty, yeah, I'll hash something out like this. But for long-term maintainability, we need to build something a little bit more elegant and a little bit more robust. Now, I've been pondering the approach I'm been I'm going to take in these videos, uh, breaking this monolithic file into uh, separate systems here. And again, a system; these boxes don't necessarily mean one class. It could be several classes working together to make one system. But in some cases, it might just be a single class. We'll We'll see that shortly. We'll get to that. I think the approach I want to take with our game is to essentially build our game again using this code. We'll do a lot of copy and paste, but we'll build our game again, pulling the code out of myglwindow.cpp and put it into these systems like so. I think that's probably the best refactoring approach here. And it's also friendly to subversion where we can commit incrementally and that sort of thing. So my first goal is to get the ship on the screen rendering again, not necessarily responding to the keyboard inputs or even rotating that sort of thing. I just want to get the ship on the screen. I want to be able to draw the ship. So the first things we're going to do, at least start in this video, is we're going to create the my game system, which for now will just be a single class. And then I want to render the ship. So I'm going to draw the ship and handle all the ship stuff from my game, get get it rendering, and then we'll build the ship thing, because there's a very awesome, elegant design pattern I'm going to demonstrate when building the ship. And we'll see that the lurper is a lot like a ship, and we can interchange their, inter interchange their pieces. So for now, I just want to get a ship rendering. Let's, let's uh, make a my game class. I'm going to go over here to the Solution Explorer, right-click, Add class my game. <coughs> Maybe I should click add before I type my game. My game. Hit enter. We get a dot h file and a cpp. Let's do our typical header guards. My game h control l control v v uh, pound define control n pound end if. Get rid of the constructors for now and. Go to the compilation unit, get rid of these as well. So there we go. We have a my game class. Now with rendering, I want to render a ship. Okay, and we'll build that ship system later, but I, I just want to draw. So what should a rendering system do? If I bring up our game, I actually show the visuals here. A rendering system, a bare bones basic rendering system, which we're going to build and then add on to later. Uh, basically has to draw stuff. Okay, we we know we have to pass vertices down for the shapes. There's a vertice here, vertice here, vertice here, vertice here, and there's also a vertice here, here, and here. So we need to be able to pass that vertex information down. I'll even write it right here: vertex uh, data, and then there's index data. 
Remember, we passed the indices, so I'll, put, I'll say index data. And then notice we're drawing the ship twice. I just kind of reused the ship triangle for this lurper in the background. Uh, and that's typical in games. If you walk into a room or you go out in the forest, in a game, you'll in a room, you'll see several instances of the same chair. That's what we call it. That's the technical term is instances, which hopefully relates back to your object-oriented programming. We're creating instances of a single chair uh, geometry made up of vertices and indices. Same thing with trees out in the... Uh, out in the open, if you play first-person shooters, you see trees, but your, your chances are you're only seeing two or three different trees drawn several times each. So what we'll call this information here, we'll call that a geometry. Okay, ge We could say geometry info or something like that, but I'll just stick with the general geometry. And then to draw, in this case, I'm drawing the ship twice. Those are the instances. And I could call it instance, but I think I'll stick with the term. I like this term. I, a friend taught me this term, but it's a renderable. All right, so in the case of the triangle, we have one geometry. Let me actually circle this all together. One geometry, but we render it. We, uh, let me get a better color here, maybe black. We render it twice. So we'll have two renderables in one geometry. A renderer, again bringing back our diagram here. Let me erase all this stuff in front of it. A renderer needs to manage the geometries and it needs to manage the renderables. And if every game loop that we go through, the renderer can say, okay, what are my renderables and what are their associated geometries? Then the rendering system can just go and draw those on the screen for us. So that's the that's the first system, or the second system, I guess we built the game. That's the second system we're going to add here. So let's get started with the basics there. That's, this is going to be in our engine. I'm going to add a new folder. I'll say this is the rendering system, and right-click in here, add a new item. We'll do a header file, and I'll call this a geometry, if I can spell right. Geom, oh, I did spell it right. Geometry, and, oh, I did add it in the right folder. Okay, good. Geometry, and we'll call this renderable. So here's our geometry and our renderable classes. And, or files at least, we'll, we'll put the... Then one more add class uh, renderer is what we'll call it. Click finish, and of course when I add a class it doesn't put it in the folder. So there we go, we have our geometry renderable render pound if and def engine renderer h, control l, control v, v Pound define, control N, pound end if. I should just make a Visual Studio macro to do all this automatically for me. Uh, we'll get rid of all this too. And I think we're good. Uh, let's pop back over, control alt L to the geometry, pound if and def, engine, geometry, H, control L, control V, control V, end if. Oops, no, pound define, control end, pound end if, and we'll say class, geometry, and this geometry is, it's really going to be a helper for the renderer, it's, it's a data, data specific class, it's basically a data info, and what, what kind of things, if when we draw the ship, let me just put this here, put this here, put this here, we, what are we storing about the, ship. We're connecting the vertices, which right now are just vector threes. Then we also have to say how those vertices are connected. Remember the indices we passed to OpenGL? I think we did 0, 1, 2, or maybe we did 0, 1, 2. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter, uh, except with winding order, but not concerned with that for right now. I actually want to put this in a namespace as well. Namespace rendering. We should put all of our rendering stuff in the rendering, oops, rendering, control KF, 
Uh, I noticed Visual Studio 2012, you can control KD now in C++ files, and it automatically formats. I, hopefully we'll start using Visual Studio 2012. The year is 2013 right now, you think I'd be that, that far ahead. Uh, okay, we need to store basically the position null data, that's a vector 3 I believe, so let me go namespace math, and I'll say class vector 3, we did a 3D, I think we did. The 3D was, not not 3D essentially, but necessarily for the uh, affine transformations. Anyway, why am I doing it this way? Uh, hopefully this is familiar to you. I could pound include, I said pound include, is it math slash vector 3DH? I could do that. I could do that, but the problem is, if I right-click on here, open the vector 3DH. Remember, a pound include is going to copy and paste all this code in there. And it will also copy and paste all the code that's in here. And also copy and paste all the code in there. And all I want to store in this geometry is a pointer, math vector 3D pointer, to the vertices. I, ju I just want a pointer. And in the case of a pointer, pointers are, it doesn't matter if it's a pointer to a cow, a pig, a main class, a rendering, a geometry, a, any, it, all pointers are the exact same size. So for now, I'm just telling the compiler, not the linker, not the preprocessor, just the compiler, hey compiler, there's this, this namespace called math and class vector 3D, and I want a pointer to that. And the compiler says, oh, okay, cool. Now, if I wanted to come down here, maybe I was in a function and say vertices, sub zero dot and then call a function on vector maybe you know, normalized or whatever functions we have there if i want to do that well all of a sudden the compiler can't look at this and say hey is, is there a normalized function I, I don't know this doesn't tell me and, and in that case the pound include would be required so in general we want to keep our header files as lean and mean as possible because they get pound included into several CPP files and CPP files are the things that actually get compiled. We don't compile header files, we just copy and paste them into compilation units and I have videos on this on the C++, C++ playlist. Anyway, let's keep it as lean and mean as possible. I just want a pointer to vector 3Ds. We'll define what those are later in a CPP file. So we have a pointer here to vertices and then we need to know the number of vertices. I want to say uint num verts is what I'll call it. And to get unit uint, I have to pound include uh, what was it? Miscellaneous, miscellaneous type defs. If you remember, we created this type defs file. Very simple file. It says type def unsigned int uh, uint, and I put it in this Jamie engine namespace, which I actually. It's going to be painful, but I'm going to take that namespace out. I don't think it's necessary or buying us anything. Uh, the compilations are going to be hideous. I'll have to go take JE. Uh, I know in the code we have several places where I have JE colon colon uint, and I'll have to take all that out. So we have a pointer to the vertices. We have the number of verts, uh, const, unsigned, short. I think to be consistent, we should type def that. So type def unsigned short to be a u short so now I can just say u short pointer to the indices and then same thing again here u int num indices like so so this is our geometry is a data dumb class all it's storing is a pointer to the vertice data uh, the indice data and you'll see later we can actually get rid of all this but for now we're going to store that uh, it'll be much later when we get rid of all this, and I'll show you some really cool techniques. Let's go do the renderable. I'm going to save that, and, and uh, same thing here. Let's I'm actually just going to let's go back to the geometry file. I'm going to cheat and grab these. Control C, Control V, Control H, uh, and I want it to be engine renderable H. Replace all. Pound end if control U to lowercase that namespace. What I call it rendering. Yep, rendering, rendering. I think I'm gonna put the geometry here. New vertical tab group so that I just have it here for my own reference. Uh, namespace rendering. Class renderable. And this is actually a pretty simple class. 
all it has to store, remember, we're, we have one geometry for the ship. Okay, three vertices, three indices, real simple. Uh, but yet we're going to render it twice, thus two renderable. So in here, we're just going to say const geometry pointer what we want to render. I actually picked that word specifically. It's, it's a word a friend taught me. It's, it's real well. This is what we want to render. And I'm pointing to a geometry. Uh, but in here, we don't have geometry defined. I could pound include the geometry h file, but for the same purposes, I'm not including the vector 3D. I'm just going to come down here in the rendering namespace and say class geometry to satisfy the compiler and say, hey, I just want a pointer to this geometry thing. It will be defined later. No stress. Now, what's the key difference between our two ships? If I built this and ran this, and it won't build because I've tweak too much stuff. But if I did build this, and I did, did run this, and you saw the lurper moving on, and you saw the ship sitting there in the middle or responding to my keys, what is the difference between the lurper and the ship? The key difference between those two is where they are rendered. And how do we determine where they are rendered? Via a matrix. So let's, let's go up here, pound include. I actually have to make a matrix the, a matrix part of this renderable class it's going to actually take up room in this renderable class it's going to make the renderable class bigger so pound include math slash matrix matrix 2d h dot h and enter there and then down here math matrix 2d h I'm not storing a pointer to a matrix I'm actually storing the matrix and I'm going to say this is where we want to render it. Now why does where turn blue? Because Visual Studio 2010 can't figure it out. Where is a keyword in C sharp and I think that's why Visual Studio might be, I don't know. I don't know why it's blue, but it's not a keyword in this case, so don't stress it. It should be black. Pretend it's black. Okay, so the renderable tells us what we want to render and the what is is the vertices, number of verts, the indices, number of indices, and the renderable also tells us where we want to render it. So I'm going to stop the video from right here, and in the next video we're going to continue writing the renderer and see if we can get a ship or maybe even two ships on the screen.